Yeah, so Fujifilm makes these amazing cameras and lenses, but today we are gonna talk about a brand new little device from Fujifilm called the Instax Square, and it can do what these cannot, print and share your photos. Well, hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. In the past, I have reviewed two Fujifilm products that deal with printing your photos. First, the Instax Mini Evo camera and more recently, the Instax Mini Link 2. Both of them offered something that can still wow an audience today and that is being able to print out your photo to something tangible that you can see, you can feel, and you can hold. Well, they just released a brand new smartphone printer called the Instax Square Link. And they seem to be releasing new shape configurations with each of these printers. Now, unlike the mini link, the Instax square link is square. I love my job. Okay, let's get the disclaimer out of the way. Fujifilm North America did send this unit to test and review. However, Fujifilm did make it clear to me that even if I gave this unit a nice review, I still could not keep this loner lens, <laughs> nor the X-H2. So yeah, Fujifilm did not pay me to review this printer, create this video, nor did they have any say as to the content or what I was going to say about it. They haven't seen this video until right now when it's been published for everyone. And also just to clarify, this is a test unit. The box that it came in was completely blank. It hadn't even been finished yet, as was the blank instructions. Check this out. Also, some of the screenshots that I'll be showing you from the app were from the beta version and they may have changed, so keep that in mind. So inside the box you get, as I mentioned, the instructions, a USB-C cord, which is a nice change from the older Instax Mini Link 2, and of course the printer itself, proudly proclaiming not to just take, but to give. But of course, you're also gonna need to purchase the film, which is sold separately. A two pack of film that gives you 20 images will cost approximately $18. Now this is $2 more than the film for the Mini Link 2. And that's because you're getting larger images with this unit. The printer itself sells for $140 and it comes in two colors, ash white and midnight green. This is the midnight green version. It's made entirely of plastic, very lightweight, weighing in at 236 grams. And although it's plastic, it is fairly solid, and it's 5 inches by 4.1 inches by 1.5 inches. Now the printer itself is powered entirely by a 3 watt internal battery, which is powered by the supplied USB-C cable, and I found that it takes about an hour to fully charge the battery. Once it is fully charged, you get about 100 prints before you need to charge it again. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Wondershare. And they're powerful, but very easy to use creative video editing platform called Filmora. In addition to the basic features you'd expect in a video editor, Filmora also offers a variety of more advanced tools such as titles, automatic reframing, speed ramping, and motion tracking. All of this gives you more creativity to work with your video footage. There's even a screen recorder built right into the program. Now making your edits is simple, especially if you don't have a lot of video editing experience. Filmora comes with included templates, titles, Titles, graphics, royalty-free music, audio effects, and video effects. Your 4K footage plays back smoothly in the program and adding advanced effects is a breeze. Motion tracking can be pretty much done with a click of a button. Basically anyone can get started with Filmora easily and quickly, even with zero editing skills. It is very simple to use. Filmora is free to try out and I will leave a link down below in the description of this video where you can check out Filmora further. I want to thank Wondershare for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the show. The front of the unit has two buttons, a function button and a power button with an LED. On the left side, you have both a USB-C port as well as a small reset hole that you need a paper clip to kind of get in there and activate. The top of the unit is where the photos are printed while the back has the film door and a switch to unlock it. Loading the film into the camera is easy. Just pop open the back and line up the yellow marks on the film pack with the back of the camera. Slide it in, close the door, and the printer will eject a blank placeholder 
cover, after which you are ready to start your printing. Now, at this point, you need to install the Instax Square app on your smartphone, because that's what you're gonna be using in its entirety to control the printer. Now, the app itself isn't bad as far as apps are concerned, and connecting the printer is very easy. Just turn on the unit, open the app, and you can easily pair it together. It literally took me about two minutes. Now, the app has four main areas, simple print, AR print, Instax Connect, and editable print. In addition, there is an area to use your smartphone's camera to take new photos to print, as well as a section to import artwork and drawings. In the settings, you can adjust various preferences of the app, including the type of saturation for image colors and some of the hardware preferences. Now, the end result of using this printer, obviously, is the printed photo that you can get from it. Each print is 62 millimeters by 64 millimeters with a pixel count of 800 by 800 dots. These are definitely larger than the prints you get from the older Instax Mini Link 2 printer. And if you are importing images from your phone to print, it will work with JPEG, PNG, DNG, and even the new HEIF format. Now, once you start printing a photo, it takes about 12 seconds for it to come out of the printer. And after that, it's about a minute or so development time before you can see the fully printed images. Now, while the app is no Photoshop, it does have some editing and interesting photo sharing features. Simple print is exactly that. You select an image on your phone or even a single frame from a video that you've shot that's stored on your phone, and then you can crop, rotate, add one of three filters, adjust the brightness, saturation, and contrast, overlay text, emojis, or even small artwork. There's also an area called editable print where you can create a collage of prints and then print that collage out. Once you're done editing, you simply print out your photo using the print button right on the app. And if you want to print more than one copy, say you're with a group of people and you want to give each one of them the same print, you can quickly print out the same image by pressing and holding down the function button for two seconds. As soon as you do that, another copy of the same photo will be printed. Your previously printed photos are all stored in the app so that you can always go back later on and print them again. Now there's a new feature called AR Print. AR stands for Augmented Reality. And what you can do here is actually pretty interesting. First, you select a photo from your camera roll, and then you add some text or a small drawing. You then print the photo, which includes a QR code on it. When you give that photo to a friend, they then use their smartphone to scan the QR code. And once they do, they will see the additional AR features that you've added to it. And what's interesting is that whatever you add on to the photo, say it's a bunch of balloon hearts, these correctly rotate in whatever angle the photo is being held in. I found that this works actually really well, and it's a cool feature. You know, it reminds me of the invisible ink I used to play with when I was a kid. Only now, you have a photo, which you see the photo, but you can add additional messages and emojis to that photo that can only be seen if the person uses the QR code to put it in that augmented reality. Overall, this is an interesting feature to be included in the printer. And there's another feature similar to this called Instax Connect. Now, this is very similar to the AR feature that I just showed you, but it makes your photos communicate more like social media messages. Here's how it works. Person A finds a photo and then adds some text to it. Person A sends the image to person B through, say, a text message. When person B gets it, they can then open it up, view it, and even make a comment on it. Once they do that, person A will get a notification and can see what person B wrote. It's kind of a fun way to share a photo back and forth and comment on it with friends and family. And just like the Instax Mini Link 2, you can import sketches or signatures or any other kind of artwork and overlay it onto your photos to create something new. In this example, I took a photo of a Fujifilm pin and then I overlaid it onto a photo. Because you can use original artwork and drawings and sketches and that sort of thing, the possibilities for creativity on this is endless. Overall, I think this printer is a good deal for the price. You get a very versatile printer and one that can be a lot of fun if you spend a few minutes learning the AR features that it has. The quality of the prints are very good and the larger square size of the prints I actually like better than the Mini Link 2. Now, as far as working with other Fujifilm cameras, no. This printer is basically designed to print from your smartphone. You cannot, say, wirelessly connect this to your Fujifilm camera, your X-T4, X-H2, whatever, and print images from that camera. An 
And I actually think that that is an opportunity that Fujifilm should consider adding through some sort of a firmware update. With the Instax Mini Link 2, you can print from your Fujifilm XS10 camera, but that is the only camera I know of that would work. So basically this is a smartphone printer only and doesn't yet really work with Fujifilm cameras. But as far as the printer itself, this is a great little printer that I recommend for anyone wanting a compact, easy to use and great way to print out smartphone photos, all with a bit of interesting technology like the augmented reality that's built in. It reminds me of the older Polaroids, you know, with all of the same fun that you get in sharing printed photos, but with updated, new, and interesting technology. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful, or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I'm gonna be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you in a brand new video next week. Take care. When person B gets it, they can open it up, view it, and... How did this light get turned on? <laughs> Everything that can go wrong shooting a video goes wrong. Even the light coming on on a cell phone.